Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga. And today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played. Now this was uh, against a similar rated player, I would say. And I was playing as white here. Began with d4, opponent plays knight f6. Bishop g5 to begin with, just trying to pressurize the knight straight away. Open plays e6. And then I went with e3. Open goes for d5. Now acquiring further control of the central squares. Uh, and I played bishop over to e2. Kind of passive, you can say. But the idea is to play h4, h5. So that I'm pressurizing the king side straight away. Here my open plays c5. And I uh, went with c3, just trying to consolidate the center so that f pawn takes. I have an option to take with either, depending on which side I will castle. So if I'm planning to castle on the queen side, I'd rather take with the e file, open up the e file for the attack. Uh, and if I'm preparing to castle on the king side, I might take with the c pawn as well, so that I can attack from queen side. So it depends on where I want to take. So I played c3. Uh, which solidifies my center for the time being. Here my knight, uh, in my open plays knight to c6. And now h4 as planned earlier. Now a6 by the opponent and I went with h5 straight away. My opponent plays bishop on to e7. And I kept pushing the pawn to h6 now. Which will be painful eventually for my opponent as uh, generally it is. Uh, can backfire as well because you are just pushing a pawn. Like I played three pawn moves and could have developed my pieces uh, faster. But uh, the advantage of this pawn is that you will end up having some good checkmating patterns. The pressure is constant on g7, so opponent will feel the heat of it sometime or the other. Uh, here I played knight f3, opponent uh, plays b5, trying to expand on the queen side, maybe ideas of pushing the pawn c4 forward blocking my bishop completely or maybe taking down the pawn or maybe pushing the pawn on b4 as well so just trying to make sure that he's expanding on the queen side gaining some space developing the bishop uh, eyeing the king side here i went with knight e5 straight away and my opponent doesn't take uh, to my surprise and develops the bishop so i took on the knight opponent takes back with the bishop uh, and i develop the knight here uh, to d2 uh, the ideas of going over to f3 eventually. Here my opponent plays pawn forward c4, which is the way, uh, which can be easily uh, handled. And that's what I tried to do. So playing b3 straight away, asking opponent to take. And if he doesn't, I have ideas of dislodging the uh, b5 first by playing a4 myself so that some trades can happen. My opponent denies the exchange and places a5. And I went with a4 as i was just telling then open plays b4 now so i can trade and i took on uh, the c pawn first so that my bishop would be active eventually and opponent also takes the pawn uh, b takes on c3 and then i just move my knight over to f3 i've got the desired square for, with the knight i have weakened up the pawn structure which my opponent was expanding and I'm re ready to go to e5, which is a controlling square for the knight for sure, which we would be hitting a couple of important squares to begin with. So here my opponent plays bishop b4, hoping that he can play pawn forward and that to discover check and get my queen. But of course, that was an obvious move and it, it came straight forward. Uh, so I just moved uh, castle on the king side. And now my king is safe. Uh, I have a h6 pawn which is defended of course with the bishop i am controlling i have a pin as well uh this bishop is misplaced i would say it's hitting nothing to be honest and yes there are lots of weaknesses that's why the advantage already in favor of white uh by 2.1 in the evaluation bar here open castles and i uh, took on the pawn okay i had a move as per the computer here Knight to e5. That's a severe advantage. I just want to know why it changed from 2.1 to 7.2 if I place the knight here. Just curious to know because if, say, bishop moves backward, okay, I can expand. Okay, that is the whole advantage. And if the best move as per computer is queen over to c7, 
um, then I can take, of course. So why is that a best move? If bishop goes back and I take on, that's also okay. Just it's more about expansion because your pawns would be too solid and too tough to be uh, taken away. That's why computers rating it so high that it would be tough for the opponent to control the situation from there on. So yeah, that's a huge advantage, but I let it go. I, I took on the pawn. I didn't see that coming. Um, I took on the pawn first. Uh, we were here, right? Yeah, open castle and I took on the pawn. Open takes back with the pawn and then knight on to e5, attacking the bishop, which I should have played earlier, not taking the pawn, but yes. And then bishop comes on to b5, making sure that the rook is not going to come on to e8. And bishop is solid there, defends the pawn as well forever. And now I can maneuver my queen and rooks. Here open plays queen to d6, trying to remove the pin. And I had this in my mind that I can take the knight straight away because after open takes, there's a folk coming, which will leave uh, me to getting a rook in, in for the knight. Not a bad trade at all, and I, and we do exchange knight against the rook. And here again, a white is slightly having advantage of 0.4, not a huge one despite winning the exchange. And that's because uh, the bishop is uh, eyeing the right diagonal now, light square bishop at least. Queen is active and is going to take a pawn as well, which cannot be defended. So it can be tricky as well. The c pawn uh, on c3 is also a problem, which can cause in the future uh, and rook can defend it for some time and push the pawn forward as well so that's why uh, in in overall my advantage is just 0.54 uh, 0 0.4 for now and i went with queen f3 trying to uh, maybe take uh, control of the f6 maybe willing to exchange queen someday but had to develop the queen queen wasn't doing anything over there Opponent takes the pawn and I play g3. My idea was simple now to get my king up, get the rook active and attack the h7. Open probably saw that coming. Places the queen onto g7. I go with king g2 and opponent plays h5 straight away. And I still play uh, rook h1, maybe hoping for a rook lift. Uh, and then opponent plays a uh, rook to c8. It, it had to come because it's a pass pawn. So it has to be stopped as well. So rook c1, again, a natural move. Um, now the queen goes back on to f8. I have a, a move which says, like, I can move the pawn forward so that we trade and I'll have a good uh, control of my king and uh, rook lining up. So some, some attack can, is possible from there. Uh, but I just try to uh, make sure that uh, my bishop can also pitch into the attack and I can defend this as well because pawn forward uh, looks bad. I cannot take only I have one piece. So I've just got another piece into the action so that if now pawn forward, I, it, it can be captured. Open plays queen to d6 uh, and then I played a rook to h4. Open plays bishop c6 again hitting the pawn which is not defended. So bishop to c2. And now queen goes over uh, to d7. And my whole focus shifted towards this pawn, saving this pawn, because if I don't save it, I had threats of uh, queening, opponent queening pretty quickly. Although what I could have done is ma making my rook move to the other side of the board. And now if pawn takes, uh, I can simply take this. And if my opponent, if doesn't take, then it's going to be bad. So opponent will have to take. And once the open does take, you are taking with the queen and it's going to be a good attack here on the uh, king side. Uh, king is wide open. Yes, this would be uh, mistakeful because you just lose on the spot. So you have to make sure that your king moves. And if king goes to the side of the board, now you can take the bishop as well, which would uh, misplace uh, the queen as well in the next move because queen has to take it. If the queen at all goes there, uh, you can just simply give a check, take the rook and simplify stuff as well. Or you can just um, block the uh, the uh, e-file and then give a check from here with the rook. And all the lot of possibilities, it's made in seven. So anything can happen from there. So, But since my opponent was attacking the pawn, I was just trying to defend it. And I got my queen backwards from f3 to a d1. Uh, here, my opponent plays rook e8. 
And I now try to break open the pawn structure from there by placing g4 myself. Often it takes with the pawn. Now I can get my queen backwards again. I was trying to defend the pawn, so I didn't see that coming. I just took with the rook. Open plays um, king over to g7. And I got my rook back here. My open plays uh, rook h8. And I uh, tried to save now the pawn uh, with the rook because this was not a threat anymore. So I'm defending it twice. Now I can move my queen was the idea. And now bishop uh, comes on hitting the rook uh, from d6. And I tried to just maneuver my rook instead of playing f4. f4 would look good, but on the hind side, it weakens up uh, the e3. And some attack can come there as well. So I was pretty much not okay playing f4. But instead, the move that I played was a blunder, rook g5. That is checkmate in two with queen coming on to h3. I go down and that's check, uh, checkmate. So rook g5 is the definite blunder. But who, who sees all the blunders? <laughs> Humans don't. Uh, here my opponent uh, places the rook on h2. Uh, from so it was a situation where I was in mate two, mate in two. Now it's minus three point six. Yes, still a huge advantage to the opponent because it's just uh, pushing me somewhere else. And now queen comes into the attack. I have to move my king. I'm just running away with, with my king. And opponent tries to hunt it down, getting the bishop active as well now, so that a check can uh, lose the queen on the spot. I saw that coming. Placed my queen on g1. Opponent goes back with the bishop, which was kind of strange. Now I can take this, uh, sacrifice the rook, but I didn't want to calculate the sacrifice that point of time because I was 38 seconds on the clock against 1 minute 15 seconds for the opponent. So I had to play fast as well. I just tried, thought of moving my king. And as soon as I do, uh, bishop gives a check from a6. I took on the pawn. Queen comes on the other side of the board suddenly with queen c8. Uh, and I just come back with my uh, king on to d2. And then bishop gives a check. I maneuver my uh, king backwards again. Queen is suddenly jumping on uh, again. And I took on the rook here. It's made in four from here again. Uh, but my opponent didn't see that coming as well. Took take on the rook. Uh, and I, defend, I defended the check with the bishop. Opponent uh, gets the queen backwards. I just move my king. Opponent follows up with a check. I defend this time with the bishop. And now opponent gave a check with the bishop so that I trade and he can take back uh, by taking my bishop with queen takes on c2. And uh, after this situation, if you see, I have somehow made my way through the storm <laughs> because that was end of the game long back uh, with rook g5 on 37th move. And all the way it was made in four again on the 45th move with queen h takes on h2. But I managed somehow and now it's like a plus 0.1. Hardly anything to choose between both the sides. But I have weathered the storm and make it through so far. Now I moved my king on to f3. Opponent gives a check from d1. I just sidestep. And now there are no checks. Finally, we have come out of the trouble. And now, because we have suddenly 3.3 in favor of white, because I have a rook against the bishop. Opponent takes the pawn, and I go with queen e, uh, e5 there, hitting the uh, king with a check. King moves down, and then I place my rook backwards with the idea of going on to h3 and then checkmating from h8. Opponent gets the bishop back in time, uh, and then I just place my rook on to h3. And in this place, uh, my opponent's time ran out. And I was behind on time for most part of this game. I was being checkmated multiple times. But at the end, scoreboard says I won the match. So yes, my opponent played really well, but I stuck it through and I won it. So that's the whole thing in chess. You have to fight it out. Don't give up. Don't think that open saw the checkmate in two. I have seen people resigning when they say that, okay, it's checkmate in two, why should I play? They just resign, thinking that, oh, I blundered the piece, I'll resign. What's the purpose of resigning? Let the opponent do mistakes. If you can do a mistake, the opponent can also. So just wait for your time, weather the storm, and then come through good. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow again with some instructive content.
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर टाइम टेक केयर बाय